Hello, it's uh, May 29th, and it's about five weeks after my last video, and it's finally a beautiful day here in Wyoming um, after about four weeks of, uh, of solid rain. So um, here we are. I have spent a fair amount of time uh, stripping paint. I, um, I did a wet sandblast on the chassis, and... Um, and then uh, that got the majority of it till I ran out of sand. Um, actually, it worked out really well. And since then, I've gone to a wire brush. As you can tell, um, the chassis is on a rotisserie, which I, uh, I made myself. Um, actually, I had planned on making one out of, uh, out of wood, and um, I had every intention of doing that. And then, um, and then in my basement, I discovered th that I had a, uh, an old panel uh, dolly. Um, that I last used to move uh, drywall around our basement when we were finishing it, um, which was a couple of years ago. And uh, I had probably a thousand pounds of drywall on it at one point. And, um, and so what I basically did is I uh, cut it in half. I put a pipe uh, in between the lower section. Um, you know, I, I, I'm fully comfortable with the casters there. Uh, and I'm actually totally comfortable with the, uh, the strength of the thing. Um, so basically on the front, uh, I looked everywhere online trying to figure out how to build a rotisserie. So this is how I attached mine. Um, uh, just I attached it to the, uh, I believe, what, where the shrouds mount uh, with a piece of uh, angle iron. Um, right here is my uh, pivot point. It's just a, uh, I believe it's like a half inch bolt. Um, on the other side, you'll see uh, my half inch bolt. Um, this is uh, screwed to that, um, to that angle on the other side. Uh, the reason being, I have the ability now to uh, to grab it and rotate it pretty easily. I'm just doing this with one hand. And then when I get it in position, I can simply put a pin through here. Uh, at any point I want I want to hold it, I, um, I just drill a half inch hole through my plywood, drop my little pin, fancy dancy, huh? Uh, through it and uh, and it holds it. And so I have, you know, what, four or five holes drilled at various positions. Um, so uh, stripping has been, um, has gone really, really well. Um, the, uh, what I didn't get with the sandblaster, I've gone and uh, used a wire wheel for. And um, that worked really well. With the exception of in here, I still got some work to do because, uh, you know, about a half inch of the English gunk um, just condensed in that area. And it's just been impossible to get out. Uh, sandblaster uh, did nothing, um, so I need to I need to find some super heavy duty solvent. I haven't haven't gone after it yet. I'm actually I hate the idea, but I'm actually even considering a little gasoline and a toothbrush. Um, typically, gasoline is a pretty amazing solvent. You just don't want to I don't want to drip anything on the on the concrete that I don't have to. Um, you'll see the uh, I have a, a door attached, and it's uh, it's bungeed in place. Um, the door gaps, until it closes, I'm not happy with the gaps. Um, I'm hoping that that will solve itself when I, uh, when I put new sills in and rockers. Uh, they're on the way, hopefully should be here this week. Um, that's why I didn't bother stripping the rust from this area. Uh, but you'll see the chassis, uh, it's, it's good with the exception of um, if there's some spots where somebody did a really lousy job of, of jacking the vehicle. Um, I found online a site called Healy Archaeology that, uh, that showed a really nifty idea of, um, of basically welding a bolt to your, to your low spot and then um, just essentially uh, uh, pulling on the bolt you know, with a, uh, with a cross member until, um, until you get it straight. And I'm planning to do that. Um, let's see, uh, the back end looks really good. Um, you know, you'll see uh, the chassis rails look pretty good. Um, you know, there's uh, there's some spots that I didn't like at all. For example, uh, this was uh, completely rotted out, um, just like that spot is. Uh, it's not pervasive, and it's for some reason it's just in these cross members. Um, I suspect it's because there's no way for water to get out, where the other the other members were far better. And so with this one, uh, I just cut it out, and I'm planning to weld in a patch. Um, I've got some uh, 15 grade, uh, 15 gauge uh, steel. Uh, let's see. So the back end, uh, just thought I'd show you guys how I have attached the um, uh, 
the rotisserie. I um, I planned on welding, and you know, I just I, frankly I trust bolts a little bit better than my welding at this point, uh, at least on the thick steel. Um, I'm better on the, the thinner stuff. My my small welder doesn't get the penetration I'd really like it to have. Um, so we're making progress. Uh, you know, the the fun thing was. Um, so it, it's been uh, it's been raining for about a month straight, so I really haven't gotten a lot done outside on this where I really need to sand. But I did strip down the doors, and I started on the panels, and that looks, frankly, just amazing. Um, although, I will say that the uh, the aircraft stripper I used, um, the whatever the black primer is at the core of this, it just laughed. It just laughed at the aircraft stripper. And so I really ended up having to use the stripper to get off the top a layer or two of paint and um, and then uh, I used a uh, an abrasive pad um, essentially a I don't know plastic abrasive disc on my grinder and uh, and it took it off very very nicely it left a, a nice scuff so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that um, and and the fact that I don't have to patch anything on this door is great you will notice on this door I have well, I don't know if you can see them I've got a couple of tiny pinholes here, but uh, but I can get a spoon on the back side of that, and uh, and and I can weld that up really easy. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. It's just uh, looks like water crept in the door at one point. Um, so anyway, we're doing great. Um, so I guess what I can tell you, lessons learned in this process is um, the last time uh, we did this video, the the car was still sitting on the ground on jack stands, and um, and I had. Uh, I had the suspension in it, so I got all the suspension taken out. Uh, to do that, took every tool in my arsenal, um, including, and I, you know, so I've got a really nice set of, of wrenches and all that, but this whole car um, is put together with spot welds and sheet metal screws. And, um, and then every once in a while, you'll have um, a bolt. And I've said some really rude things about Donald Healy um, as I was doing this, and I should probably apologize for that. Um, but uh, it seems like every single bolt that is on this car, you are incapable of getting a ratchet on. Um, they, they put them in the strangest places, and so you spend your lifetime uh, doing this uh, with a spanner. And uh, I believe that's the English term. We call them box wrenches or combination wrenches. But um, you just absolutely cannot get a ratchet on these. And, um, you know, so I have a nice set of, uh, of combination wrenches. But combination wrenches are, in a lot of cases, they're too thick. And so what I ended up having to resort to was the cheap $1.99 for a whole pack of five wrenches. And, um, and those were made just cheap enough to be thin enough that I could get them on some of the lock nuts. Um, and so if you're gonna do this yourself, get a really, really cheap set of wrenches. I know Snap-on makes some thin ones, but the reality is just go to O'Reilly's or Advanced Autos or whatever you have next to you and buy the cheapest set of wrenches you can. And, and the thin ones will help you tremendously in areas where, where you couldn't solve it before. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm at. You'll see I've cut, cut out all the floors. Um, I'm uh, really, really happy with the rotisserie. Um, here, let me just lock it in place. So you're getting a strange view right now. That's because I'm messing around with the rotisserie. Um, so uh, let's see, so I put my little pin in and now my rotisserie is, uh, is set so you, know, you can see the top side. Um, but that's pretty solid. Um, you know, it's a little bit of flex, but I absolutely have zero worry. Uh, you'll see the white powder. That's just uh, phosphoric acid um, where I, I was just etching the, the metal. And then I typically uh, come back with a wire, um, a wire cup on my grinder and, and knock that off. But uh, it just keeps stuff from, from forming. So anyway, we're making progress. Um, you know, five weeks, I, I feel good about where I'm at. Um, I obviously, I have a lot of welding to do at this point. Um, I have new floors on the way. I have new sills on the way. I have, uh, I have various pieces and parts and they should be here this week because that'll be pretty exciting. Um, so anyway, that's where we sit. Uh, I suspect it'll be a while before I make another video because, uh, because it's gonna, it's gonna take me a while to get all the welding done and, and maybe when I'm ready for, uh, for epoxy primer or something like that, I'll, I'll do another one. Um, in the meantime, I've been stripping down the, the rear differential and, and uh, I think that's in decent shape and I plan to just put uh, just put gear oil in it and I think I'll be okay. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to figure out how to get the frame as, as strong as I can. I'm even, 
I know there's some purists out there that'll be horrified of this, but um, I've even uh, considering um, putting in, um, pouring in polyurethane foam into the foam rails. Um, the, the frame is a little, it's okay. It's not as strong as I would like it to be. And, and uh, you know, in the frame rails, You've got holes like this one. I don't know if you can see my finger. Um, and, uh, and I'm pretty certain I could pour like an eight pound or a 16 pound foam in there. And uh, you don't want the stuff that you inject because that is either A, not, um, not watertight, or B, it's too soft to really do any good. But the strong stuff, the eight pound or the 16 pound is really strong. It's, it's uh, stronger than wood and, um, and that has a lot of appeal for me. Uh, it would certainly stiffen my chassis. The question I have not yet resolved is whether I'm going to create rust issues over time. Um, but the fact that my chassis is a little saggy right now um, makes me wonder if that is a better case than, uh, than the alternative, which is nothing. Because um, I don't really want to weld patches on the side of my frame if I'm not happy with the rigidity of it and I don't know I'm not even there yet but this is what I'm, I'm kicking around so if you got ideas if you got comments feel free to shoot them to me um, uh, and and any decision made on that front uh, would be months from now once I've got everything welded in place because uh, obviously you don't want to do welding first before you touch anything like that so anyway so that's where I'm at um, and uh, and obviously I've made other progress on other things that I haven't even thought about telling you about right at this moment. But um, but it's been fun. I'm uh, I'm absolutely loving this car, and uh, it's been it's been kind of a joy. Uh, my wife I think is a tad bit jealous, but she is uh, infinitely patient. So uh, so she's been pretty good. So anyways, um, be a couple months I'm sure. But uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks.